In this part, I want to implement the animation of the meteor shower in our project. It is a very interesting animation which is placed in this part. Let's go and start implementing it. To do this, we need a container that I'll name meteor shower. Inside it, uh, we will need a number of spans, the number of which is 15. Instead of creating them in this way, we will generate them using JavaScript and append them here. First, we'll create a loop that repeats 15 times and generates the spans we want. We say, let i, that is, start from 1, and as long as i is smaller than 15, make i++. It means that add 1 to i. Now, I'll create those spans. We say, let meteor, we will put them inside a variable named meteor. Each time a variable is created, we say document.createElement. Generate a span for me. By each time, it means it will generate the span 15 times and each time append it. Document.QuerySelector, where should it append it to? To here inside this. So we say inside home meteor shower. Inside meteor shower append it like so. What should it append? Append meteor. The one we created, uh, this is span that we created, appended and repeated 15 times. If I inspect the elements here, see Meteor shower here, and now it has 15 parts. Kindly note that now it has $0 on it. I say $0 and it will give me meteor shower. I say $0, the child nodes. It says it has 15 child nodes. There are 15 spans inside it from 0 to 14. There are 15 spans and what I want them to get the class of meteor. I can do it easily down here. I'll say meteor.classList is equal to meteor. See, all of them get the class of meteor. So we created 15 spans and they got the class of meteor. I have a meteor and I want to place it here. Look, this is our meteor. When I zoom in, you can see that it's a meteor. However, because it is zoomed in, it can't be seen very well. Also, its color is bright, so it makes it more difficult to see. Later, when I bring it onto the page, it will be clearly visible. Let's go and do this. What do we do first? First, uh, we need a style. After our info and image, we'll add meteor shower. In this part, meteor shower will add a style. To what? To this part. We say our meteor shower has a position, absolute, like this. Its width is 100%. We want it to cover the entire page. And its height is also 100 bh. See, this is our meteor shower. And we want it to cover the entirety of home. It will get this. After that, we say its overflow is hidden so that the meteors won't protrude from it. That is to stay in the same area. Below that, we say that these meteors, each one of the spans, firstly, has a position absolute. Secondly, please note that I should say that later, I will get the width of this meteor later. So secondly, the background image is we are now in the SCSS folder. We'll need to go back one folder and then go inside the images folder. Next, get this meteor.png. Let's go and take a look. It's like this for now. It doesn't have a width and height. What is its width and height? 60 by 49. So we'll give it a width of 60 and a height of 49. See, all of them are here on top of one another. What we want is uh, for them to be spread on the page. To do this, we, what should their top be? Their top should be generated randomly by SAS. However, we don't want to give all of them the same top. 
if we give all of them a top of 100 pixels and a left of 100 pixels, see, they all get uh, relocated together. We want them to each have a random top and left for themselves. In order to do this, we can use a SAS loop. We will add a loop here, we say for, like this, and this one is through. This is our variable, we'll name it i. Uh, we say our index starts from 1 up to what? Up to 15, because we have 15 spans, and here we have created 15 spans before. Next, we say run this loop 15 times. Here we ran a JavaScript loop 15 times, and here we run this loop 15 times in SAS. We'll put this meteor inside it. In SAS, when you want to index, see, we'll use uh, this, like this, so that you'll be able to run a SAS script. To run a SAS script and have its result in CSS. So here, in order to do this, we'll go to this part and say nth child. If I say two, see what happens? Only nth child two gets a style like this. What we want is for all of them to get it separately, to make this two dynamic based on the i, which starts from one and goes up to 15. We will use, uh, we will also follow the SAS rules and enter a hashtag and curly brackets. What should we type inside the curly brackets? Uh, we'll enter this dollar i. Now let's see what happens. If I press Alt Shift and F to and rearrange the codes, you can see these are num the numbers here, 7, 10, 8. So they have been generated. That is, if we go to the CSS file to see what's been generated, see, this is nth child, 1, 2, and this goes up to 15. Therefore, we have generated different nth childs dynamically. Now, left and top should also be dynamic. So, we say it should create a random number for us. We'll use the function random. We say the highest value we want it to create should be limited to 100. And I will concatenate this with a vh, like so. And I say generate random numbers from 0 to 100 for me. Let's take a look at the results. Please note that it will put them in double quotations in this way. And these files are not acceptable. Here, it has generated the numbers for us, 42, 93, 74, and 82. It has generated them randomly. However, it puts them in double quotations. In order to remove this, we'll use what we did earlier again. We'll enter a hashtag and generate the random numbers. As shown here, it generates the numbers randomly. See, it has generated generated random numbers that are like this. Their top values are different, which you can look at here. 6, 85, from 0 to 100, randomly. It has generated these numbers, so their top values are no longer the same. We'll do the same for the left values as well. However, for the left values, we say VW, for the width of 0 to 100 of VW. Now you can see that their left is also generated randomly. So their top and left is now random. The unit for top is VH and left is VW. Like this we can see here. Now please note that there is a bit of overflow here. Uh, we have overflow. This is because they have gone out of the frame. In order to fix this overflow in order to fix this overflow it's enough to give our meteor shower a right and top of zero to give it a distance and have it stick to this part it will completely fit this part from the right and top 
will give it a top and right of zero. So now there is no overflow anymore and these are spread around. Look at their positions. If I press a space here, um, the numbers change. So their positions. If I do it again, their positions change again. So we have generated their top and left randomly. That is each of these meteors we have here. Now they're all spread over the page. What we need next is writing an animation for them. We need, uh, we need to get them animated. How should we do this? See, uh, for one of these, if, for example, I give it a transform, see, I'll increase this. I want it to move upwards towards the corner like this, move diagonally up there. I will need to set this to 100 and this one to minus 100. Look, this moves there. I'll also give it a transition. See, by uh, giving and removing this style, it moves between the two positions. Now, I want it to move forward. To do this, what should I do? It's enough to set this one to minus 100 and this one to 100. Now it moves forward and then backward like this. So I'll just need to tell it to move from 100 and minus 100 to minus 100 and 100. How do I do this? We can create an animation. I'll type keyframes, meteor, animation. We'll name the animation meteor. We say that when the animation is at 0% at its beginning, transform, please pay attention to this part, translate, uh, from what minus value should it start? See here the value we started from, that is from minus 300 pixels and 300 pixels. When it is at 100%, uh, go to the opposite value of this to see what will happen. From 300 to minus 300, this one from minus 300 to 300, and this one from 300 to minus 300. Now, we'll give this animation to these meteors, all of them. We say animation, meteor, it should take four seconds long, it should be linear, and it should be infinite, that is, repeat indefinitely. Let's see what will happen. Take a look at the result. They are now moving in the opposite direction, so we'll need to change these values to 300 and minus 300 and minus 300 and 300 here. See, they are moving like a meteor. All right, at the moment, they're all moving at the same time. We wouldn't like it for them to move at the same time. And they all have a glitch. We say that their opacity at 0% should be 1. I'll put a semicolon here. And when it is over, their opacity should be 0. I want them to fade away. See, as they move, their opacity becomes 0. You can see that their opacity is decreasing. Next, I'll set this to 10%. See, they are returning. You can see that their return is also displayed. We should uh, do something. We should set their opacity by default to zero. So I'll say their opacity is zero at the beginning. It is zero. Look, their movements repeats again. When we set opacity to zero, I'll comment this. Their return displayed here will no longer be displayed. They fall and then they return. We don't want their return to be displayed, so we set their opacity to zero. Then they just fall. Next, all of them fall at the same time. Clearly, we don't want all of them to fall at the same time. So I'll change their time and set it to as random. Kindly note that again, we use random here. We use milliseconds. Generate 
milliseconds for me up to 5000 milliseconds uh, which means five seconds and whatever it was add 3000 milliseconds to it that is at three seconds this means that it should last at least three seconds long for each one if the generated value were zero its animation should last three seconds and if it were 5000 milliseconds the whole animation lasts 8000 milliseconds this will generate a random number for us as displayed here they will no longer fall at the same time and it takes place separately for each one. We can see it happening. We can also give it a delay. I mean give them an animation delay. Again, uh, we use random here. Let me copy this part here in this way. We won't use this 3000 milliseconds. At this time animation delay should be 5000 milliseconds. Now, as you can see, they move very fast, so we can get this, this one to 15%. It means that the entire animation plays out as 15% of the animation is executed. After that, the opacity becomes zero and it moves to the bottom side. When we set it to 15%, that movement will be gentler. In case you want the animation to be smoother, you can set it to 30%. See, now they move slowly. In my opinion, 15% was good enough. As you can see, uh, like so, they are moving. We created this meteor animation and then ran it. As you can see, it is working, but we can't select anything now. Why? Because this meteor animation is on top of everything. It has come on top of these and we'll need to give it a Z index of minus one so that we are able to select these sections. Now, will I be able to select this part? Yes, uh, I can select any of these. Our meteor animation is now in the background behind this picture. It starts from there and looks like this. In order to have most of them in this area, we can uh, decrease this value. Uh, for example, 80. That is uh, to this part. Most of them will now appear here. In responsive mode, if we check, this button is now on top. Let's find the sidebar. Although we will talk about responsive later, for now we can give our sidebar a Z index. We will give a Z index of 10 to have it move to the top and everything else will be under it. If I click here, it will also work and it is not blocked blocked by the meteor shower. As you can see, we have created an aesthetic animation called meteor shower. It is as though the background is the sky and these meteors are falling from it.